and welcome to the Take the North podcast. Day two of the NFL draft is coming up soon. This is our second, we're called an emergency draft episode. As as the first night of the draft, we had David Hall and myself. I'm Adam Staszynski, the producer of the Take the North podcast, reacting to the Bears taking Darnell Wright with their first pick in the NFL draft. And now it's Friday morning. We've had time to sit on it, and we're going to have our other host on the Take the North podcast. That's Dan Wiederer joining us. He was at Hallis Hall last night. So, Dan, how's it going? And a uh, pretty interesting <laughs> night last night, huh? So, I, I mean, let's we, we can jump right into this. And, uh, and, you know, again, if you're listening on your Odyssey app, wherever you get your podcast, download, listen, subscribe. You can listen to the episode that myself and David did on the uh, Thursday night, our, our most previous episode and check out everything that we had coming up to the draft. So, all right, Dan, let's just start in chronological order here. The Bears <laughs> are on the clock at number nine, and we instantly find out, oh, the Eagles have moved up a spot. So for those that don't know, some housekeeping, it was a 2024 for fourth round fourth pick yep. for the Bears to move back to number 10 in the draft. The Eagles move up to number nine. They take Jalen Carter. So walk me through what's happening at Hallis Hall when, when all this goes down. Yeah, well, first of all, the first – Hour plus of the draft was fascinating. You get the Texans with those back-to-back picks at two and three. You get Arizona moving out. Then you get Arizona moving back up and taking the Lions pick. Which <laughs> that I was wild. Think, that you know yeah. that was one of those moments that was pivotal for the Bears because for weeks, you know how the discussion has been. We've talked about what will happen if Jalen Carter is on the board when the Bears pick. And you're sitting here, you're going through it. You're going, okay, all right, Seattle's going with Witherspoon. Okay, now here comes Detroit. Oh, wait, no, it's not Detroit. It's Arizona. Arizona yeah. then takes Paris Johnson, who was the guy that I thought the Bears would be after uh, most. And then all of a sudden, you have this situation where it unfolds. Then at number eight, studs, your guy, B. John Robinson, yeah. comes off the board. And for me, that was almost a little bit of a, a heart stopper, just because I also wanted to get a better sense for how the Bears felt about B. John Robinson. We don't get that sense because he wasn't even available to them there. Yeah. So that's going to take some digging uh, in, in the weeks and months ahead to kind of get a, some intel on, on how they felt about him. But now you've got that decision, right? You've got that 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 firm verdict that they have to cast on what they believe in Jalen Carter. It's a clear no vote cast by, by Ryan Poles. The minute he yep. trades out of that pick, you understand the concerns that have been well documented. Not only the the, the car accident that took the lives of, uh, of two uh, members of the Georgia football program, but then the pro day. And then all these lingering questions on whether you could trust Jalen Carter at this stage to mature into a reliable professional football star, right? You, when you're using a top 10 pick studs, you're not just looking for a guy that can be, oh yeah, you, we can kind of count on him. It's like, right. we want to have a headline player that can be a professional football star and be trusted to do all the things that come with being a professional football star. The Bears obviously weren't comfortable there. And so then they pivot and they make Darnell Wright, the second offensive lineman, taken in the draft and and really sold it very well late Thursday night. I think that was probably some of the most notable stuff was just hearing the confidence in Ryan Poles' voice and hearing kind of about this April 8th workout in Knoxville, <laughs> you know, that was yeah. basically a, a two-man operation with Chris Morgan, the offensive line coach, accompanied by Ryan to the Tennessee campus to work Darnell Wright out. And I think one of the more notable things about that was Ryan confessed that like, this is not something he does often. He's not typically a major part of these workouts, but because of his offensive line background, he felt like he wanted to uh, get there boots on the ground, eyes on the prospect, see a little bit more from Darnell Wright. They obviously came away from that, that meeting and we can, can get into more of that in a second. Very impressed by not only the physical stature of Darnell Wright, but his ability to handle a whole bunch of stuff that they threw at him in that workout. Right. Yeah. I definitely want to talk about that workout that Ryan Poles talked about, but I, I just want to touch a little bit more on, on the Jalen Carter stuff, yeah. because I, I think that us on the podcast kind of all agree that the Eagles are a better situation for Jalen Carter than the bears are currently. And, and I think that if this was three years down the line, and the Bears have a top 10 pick by, by the way the Eagles did because of a trade, right? Right. And Jalen Carter's on the board, and the Bears have all the other pieces set, and they say, this is one more piece. We have our culture. We have our, uh, you know, J Justin Fields is on his on his second contract now, right. et cetera, et cetera. 
I think in that situation, they, they feel more comfortable taking him. But Ryan Poles said without directly saying Jalen, <laughs> talking about Jalen Carter, he said last night, character will always be important. Yeah. And I think that that told us everything we needed to know about, uh, besides the fact they traded out of the pick, right. that, that they, did, I, I'm, I'm guessing they didn't even have him on, on their board at that point. It'd be really interesting to kind of get a better feel for what it was. You know, they spent a lot of time with Jalen Carter. They they visited him with him at the combine, then everything happened. Then you go to the pro day and you see how, um, you know, that workout fizzled. And, and I think that left mm-hmm. a, a, a pretty strong impression on this Bears group on like, oh man, like this is a, a job interview for a big time, high profile job. You knew it was coming and still you showed up to that day incapable of completing everything that you needed to complete. And so, you know, it leaves a sour taste in your mouth and any lingering questions you had are kind of answered. I think in that moment, they, they, mm-hmm. they brought him in for the, the 30 visit clearly didn't get their, their questions answered in a way that made them feel good. Um, and look like I tweeted this on Thursday night that, that like it or not, this is going to be debated for years to come. Mm-hmm. I mean, if Jalen Carter becomes Warren Sapp and he, you know, <laughs> is a, a six time all pro and a, a game wrecking force, for Eagles defense, you're always going to say, huh, you know, uh, one of the things I wrote about Friday morning was also like, we can't lose sight of the number one pick that the Bears once owned and what the Carolina Panthers did to invest in Bryce Young. If Bryce Young becomes the best quarterback in the NFC, <laughs> you know, you're going to say, okay, while at the time, even us on the Take North podcast said it makes sense to see this through, you can't discard the idea that you owned the control of what you were doing with that moment. And if Bryce Young truly uh, turns out to be durable, which seems to be the only question that anyone in the league has about him is the size and how that's going to stand up. Well, now you've got to ask those questions as well. So uh, a lot to unpack. I think the Bears should feel really good this morning. I, you know, I said last night to some people in the media room studs that it was kind of a, a really eventful path to a pick that at the end of the night, you're just like, Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, cause I mean, it's a tackle, right? It's an offensive yeah. tackle. There's not the sizzle in the highlights that, that, that get people to run out and buy a Jersey the next morning. But I think you've got a solid building block in front of Justin Fields. We talked about the fall off at that position after the initial four guys. And so I think it was the right move here um, by the Bears to invest in the future of Justin Fields, invest in 2023 in the developmental process. And by the way, you know, they pass on this, this uh, you know, potential uh, franchise changing talent in Jalen Carter, who eight other teams also passed on before they had the opportunity to trade that pick. Right. And, and that's that's I think that's something we also need to keep in mind is the Bears are not the only team that passed on Jalen Carter. Right. I mean, Seattle took a corner and they could have used Jalen Carter. I know that they signed uh, uh, they already signed a three technique, but, you, you know, you can never have too many good three techniques. Right. right? It's it, But it's the same thing at corners. And, and Devin Witherspoon looks like he's going to be awesome. So I let, let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about Darnell right now, because yeah. so many people everyone you talk to that that liked him in this draft ryan balding or now ryan poles they they say he's got nasty in him yeah and you know we they, they, you talked about the workout that he had like he's clearly got the drive and he played his best football against the top defenders in this draft i mean will anderson went number three overall which you know cardinals picking sorry not the cardinals the texans picking back to back in the top three yeah. is, was wild that's a whole nother thing but will anderson was the first defender off the board in this draft most people had him number one on their board. Darnell Wright not only looked great against him, he shut him out when they played Alabama. And I think that that, if you're looking for a way to sell this, Ryan Poles could have just stood up there and said, here's his tape against Will Anderson. Tell me what you think. Well, you know what was interesting, Studs, is both Ryan and Darnell were asked about that because that's become kind of the signature moment that most people point to to say, this is why this guy has a chance to be a, a really good professional football player. But Darnell Wright and Ryan both said, if you just go through all the tape, you know, Darnell stood up against SEC competition for two years, one year on the left side, one year on the right side, and put a lot of good stuff on film. He's got 42 starts under his belt. He's played left. He's played right. He, he, he's, he's moved inside to guard in, 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 in a pinch. Um, and so you have a guy that that isn't afraid of the elite players. You know, Trayvon Walker in 2021 did a great job against him. That's really notable yeah. as well. He goes number one overall a year ago. So you've got a guy that, that that has seen high level competition. He knows what it looks like, and he knows how well he can fare against it. So he comes in with 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 great confidence. You look at the the you know the nastiness is there, the size, right? Like Friday afternoon, they're going to introduce Darnell Wright at Hallis Hall, and that'll be the first chance that I get to stand next to Darnell Wright. 
six five three thirty three. <laughs> That's fella. a large individual, yeah. <laughs> you know. Uh, so welcome to Chicago, big fella. And now let's see what you can do. Um, I do think it's also notable because the Bears have made it notable that the connection with Chris Morgan seems mm. to be instant and profound. And and really, we've heard all off season that they have just incredible belief in Chris Morgan as an offensive line coach to. Um, you know, take a, a, a giant block of clay and, and sculpt it into something beautiful. And so that's the next task here with Darnell Wright. And it sounds like the two of them have hit it off throughout the pre-draft process and will obviously continue to do so. Uh, and Darnell Wright said on, on Thursday night, look, like Chris has told me, this is going to be really hard and I'm going to make life hard on you, but I'm not afraid of hard. And so uh, it's nice to know that you've got that connection because the the the, the, the we talk about the hits principle all the time. But there is a, a level of grit that Ryan and Matt and, and Chris Morgan and everyone else in that building expect from offensive linemen, you know, and I think mm. that they think that they have discovered that in a surplus in Darnell Wright. And I think that, you know, we, we talked about this earlier, so we'll, we'll bring it up in more detail now. The workout that they put him through, the individual workout down in Tennessee, sounded really intense. <laughs> I, I mean, and, and, you know, Darnell Wright was saying last night, Thursday night, that, that it, it was tough. And he said, he's like, it's felt like they just wanted to see if I would quit. And right. he's like, I just had to keep going. And the way that they were working him and I'll let you describe more about what the workout was. Cause it sounds, it sounds like it was a, a wild, a wild workout that, well, that really uh, yeah. pushed him to the edge. I mean, Ryan des it described it as we, we wanted to throw him in the deep water, you know, yeah. and, and, and see how well he could swim and, and Darnell Wright swam. Well, it wasn't just physical. They talked about some some real grueling mental challenges that they gave him getting on the whiteboard there at the facility, drawing up a whole bunch of concepts, wiping the whiteboard clean, and then asking him in, in, in incredible detail to recount not only a play and a formation and everything that they were doing, but, okay, what is your blocking technique on this play? Where is your hand placement going? What, what are all these things? And just put him through such an intense exam, again, both in the classroom and then out on the field where they're just trying to see, okay, what is the fuel tank? You know, how, how many gallons of gas are in this fuel tank? And the, the, the gas light never went on, you know? And so, so it's just that, that final confirmation that, okay, this guy is wired the way mm -hmm. we want our players to be wired as we build towards winning a championship. One of the biggest questions, if you recall last August about Tevin Jenkins is whether he has a guest tank that's deep enough. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now you have a guy that the bears two years ago invested in thinking that he had a, a full level of nastiness and then they get him behind the scenes and they say, man, like we wish there was a little bit more oomph here. We wish there was a little more passion for football here. They seem to have found this in Darnell Wright. One of the other twists on this studs is just kind of the, the the concept of like, I think everybody is of the belief that this is going to be a plug and play right tackle. Mm -hmm. um, but Ryan left it open to like, let's, let's see what it looks like. You know, let's challenge Braxton Jones in 2023 to continue competing for his job and continue competing to be a starter. And so we'll kind of see how all that shakes out. We'll see if they add any more offensive linemen uh, either outside or inside over the next two days of the draft. But certainly that workout in Knoxville was was I, I think the the final piece of the puzzle for them in saying okay you know this this is a guy we feel really good about and that's you know the, uh, going back to the Carter discussion for a minute <laughs> when you put your head on a pillow uh, you know early in Friday morning after four hours of draft frenzy you want to feel really good about something you don't want to be be kind of have that the, the butterflies mm, in your yeah. stomach and the anxiety going what did we just do and I think that, that, that <laughs> there's something about that security and that certitude that they got last night. Well, that's what, I mean, you said it earlier. It's, it was the safe pick. It's not, it's not sexy. It's not flashy. I mean, picking an offensive lineman in the top 10 is never going to be flashy, but it's, if it works out, it's smart. Right. And, and what the bears needed to do. And I think that most people that cover this team that talk about this team agreed, like you can't miss on this pick. You right. know, it's it, it, it's so critical. I mean, you moved off of number one to, to and then it ended up back at number 10. And you do have a lot of other picks in this draft. But this pick especially, I mean, they don't pick again as of as of us recording this podcast. They don't pick again until number 53. So, I mean, there's yeah. 43 picks between when they picked and and yeah. when they pick again. So you could not miss on this guy. No doubt. And and look like you, you, you remember a few weeks ago when when Darnell writes name sort of was kind of a late entry into the offensive tackle market for the bears where, you know, we were talking about three for a while and then it became four mm -hmm. and you started to hear more buzz about how uh, people in the league felt about the combination of size and athleticism and tenacity that he brings. 
no one has spoken more glowingly of Darnell Wright than Lewis Riddick of ESPN, mm -hmm. who has been on the record multiple times saying that he thinks this guy can be a Pro Bowl caliber starting offensive tackle as a rookie and potentially be an all pro as a rookie and mm -hmm. potentially get this, be the best player in this draft class when all yeah. said and done, that's the highest praise you're ever going to hear. Now, look, like we all know that, that Lewis Riddick was very high on Mitch Trubisky heading into 2019. So True. we're not <laughs> saying that his judgment on talent is infallible, but when you get that level of praise from a guy who has watched it closely and then Brian Baldinger, obviously on our show, mm. uh, you know, a week and a half ago said, look like this is, this is a, a mauler here, you know, and you just watch him. Um, you, you see the way he moves and, and, and then you, you 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 pair that up with that that size like like I, I again six five three thirty three I'll let you know uh, later <laughs> today what that looks like in person because that's a big dude the last first round offensive line the Bears took was Kyle Long I know in my experiences anytime you stood next to Kyle Long you had like an elevated uh, pulse because you were <laughs> like you were like this guy could squash me. Oh in yeah. Any second. Like he could literally kill me if he wanted to in the next 30 seconds. Oh yeah. So it's, we'll, we'll see where this one goes. It's you know, anytime you stand next to, I know this is an aside, but anytime you stand next to any professional football player, it's just, I mean, even a guy like Patrick Manley, who we have right. around here all the time with the score, he's a great guy, super nice, but he's just big. Like he, you can tell it's like, yeah, that's and 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 I don't want to say he was just a lawn snapper, but you know, that's as far as positions go, long snapper, not like the super like highly athletic guys. And he like he's like, yeah, that's a professional football player. But anyway, uh, I'm, I'm uh, looking last... this up because my 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 first year in the league, um, Phil Lodeholt was the offensive tackle for the Minnesota Vikings. I'm just trying to get a size on him, but it, okay. I think he was something like six six. 350 or something. You know what I mean? And, yeah, and, yeah. and you walk into the locker room and, and, and <laughs> you, you know, as a new reporter in the league and then the beat and Hey, Phil, you got a minute. And you, and you, and yeah. you look, yeah. you know, you're looking There's up like looking this. Up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, and you say, it's, geez, they're they're. I mean, but uh, yeah, it, professional athletes in general, they're just, they're just not like us. But uh, so I, I think the last thing that I want to, uh, that I think we should touch on here is I think that investing in a guy like Darnell Wright and passing on a player like Jalen Carter, taking an offensive lineman, I think shows that another investment in Justin Fields, right? Yes. Because, because now you've gone out your off season, two biggest off season acquisitions now are DJ Moore, DJ Moore and Darnell Wright. And they're putting in, we, we, they have the rest of the draft to continue building the offensive line. If they want, maybe get a tight end, another, another receiver, et cetera. Yeah, I mean, you also have so Nate Davis and, and yeah, Robert and, Bunyan, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So, so they've, they've really retooled at so far the offensive line. They've given him more weapons and they're starting to put him in a position for this make or break year that I think we all agree. Justin Fields is about to have in 2023. There's no question about it. And, and look like, you know, we've, trademarked it i hope david got uh the, the legal team involved and trademarked the <laughs> no excuses, rolling on that the no excuses tour yeah for 2023 this is another act for the no excuses tour because here we are right like we've got uh you know a, a, a high level starting offensive tackle you've added a number one receiver you traded last year for another guy who has the potential to be you know there's just a whole bunch of moves that have been made with the design on making sure you learn every single thing that you need to learn about Justin Fields as an NFL quarterback, away we go. You know, I mean, look like, uh, unfortunately it's April 28th and we've got, <laughs> you know, four and a half months to wait until we get our first taste of real game action to see what all this looks like. But man, I'm, I'm, I'm eager for it. I'm sure you are as well. Just not mm -hmm. understanding that, that like, this is a, this is a fair test now. You know, and, yes. <laughs> and, and everyone in Chicago should understand that it's a fair test and Justin will feel like it's a fair test. And now it's uh, let's go out and see what happens. And look, um, j just circling back on the, the, the earlier talk about uh, Bryce Young at number one, the Panthers are coming to Soldier Field this fall. <laughs> OK, so part, oh, that's of the, right. part of the no excuses tour includes a head to head matchup. Uh, between Justin and and Bryce, hopefully they're both healthy at that point, and and it'll be a really uh, you know fun little subplot on on a season that's going to tell us a lot about a lot. That'll definitely, I, I'm sure that that won't be talked about at all that week. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, we'll, we'll we'll go ahead and wrap it up there. Dan Dan Weeder of the Chicago Tribune. Uh, this is the Take the North podcast. I'm Adam Staszynski, producer of the podcast. David Haw, 
it, it was with us yesterday. If you want to check out that episode, our previous episode, reacting immediately to the pick of Darnell Wright. We'll get Dan and David together at some point after the Bears are, are done drafting. We're all disjointed and moving around and doing our best to keep up with it. So we're recording this episode before the second and third round has even started. The Bears have a lot more work to do. We'll keep you up to date as best we can as things go along on the Take the North podcast. And so uh, it, until then, until next time, I, I, I we can't say right now when our next episode is going to be. I think if the Bears do something insane in the next day, we'll get another episode out. But <laughs> well, it remains it, it it remains to be seen. But it's it's definitely. You know, they, they took a big step yesterday and now they have still a lot more work to do because, I mean, this is still not a good football team. And <laughs> and but but well, as you yeah. said, as you said, at the, at the very at the very least, I think that Justin Fields won't be playing on like super all Madden mode when the season starts this this coming year, which well, is progress. Yeah. My last reminder for, for this episode is that as we talked about for a while, it's easy to take that huge exhale and be like, man, we just spent four months talking about the number nine pick. Well, they got nine more picks, potentially yeah. more to make <laughs> over the next two days. And so they got a chance to, to, to plug some holes and find some difference makers. And now it's imperative that they uh, they get back into to the war room and, and reset their board and get ready to roll for Friday and Saturday. Right. It's going to be a, a pretty interesting next 48 hours. So we'll talk to you next time in the Take the North podcast. Until then, download, listen, subscribe, follow Dan Wiederer, follow David Hall. You can follow myself if you want. Follow all of our work at, at the Chicago Tribune and on the score in Chicago. We'll catch you next time on the Take the North podcast. Great talk. See you out there.